We're really excited to be part of this uh, with the with Sherman and his team to be able to provide this ha hands-on lab. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, the Power Platform and giving you guys a hands-on lab, letting you guys play with some of the different technologies. But we're also really excited to have, and I'll introduce them later, um, one of the vice presidents from St. Jude that we, Cambay, that just did a major project for them in regards to with the, the power platform. Sherman, can you uh, go to the next slide? Sure. So just a little bit about Cambay. Cambay is a Microsoft 3 Cloud partner. And what we do is we help customers. I, I don't, I think you might have to hit the button a little bit more. There you um, go. There you go. Um, so Cambay is a three cloud partner that focuses on digital transformation. We help customers in the Azure platform or Azure cloud, the Dynamics cloud and the M365 cloud. As you can see, we have a lot of different capabilities and Cambay is a global company. So we have nine locations in the United States, five locations on a global basis, which allows us to bring the right skill set to uh, to the right project. But really, it's all about the customer and what the uh, what you guys need from us. Go ahead and move, move to the next slide, Sherman. OK. So. With Cambay, we've aligned with Microsoft and Microsoft ecosystems to develop IP, intellectual property, across the, the, the Microsoft ecosystem. And we're so closely aligned that we've created different types of um, accelerators in the different clouds to be able to help customers uh, beyond what Microsoft has done. Example of the return to workplace for the modern work, uh, modern workplace return to work. And the person that I'm going to be introducing today, this was his project. So this was a St. Jude initiative to be able to, that was designed around COVID and how to bring patients and employees back to campus in a safe manner to protect uh, St. Jude's children. Um, so Without it, you know, I don't want to take a lot of time, but I want to introduce who who we have on the on the on the call. Uh, it is Todd McWilliams. He is the vice president of uh, administration applications for St. Jude, uh, and uh, he's been a very big partner with Cambay and helping us understand what. St. Jude's initiatives are and help and us helping through that. Todd, you want to talk a little bit about the project, the initiative, and what we did for you guys and sure. everything? Yeah, so good morning, everybody. So um, I've been at St. Jude for, I'm, sec I'm starting my 22nd year, so I've, I've been here a while. And so my story starts uh, in the first half of, of 2020, you know, when COVID hit and we were trying to wrap our arms around our response to the pandemic and, you know, protecting our patients and patient families and our staff, you know, that was really priority one for us. And so, um, so our first task was to um, identify those people who we could send home uh, to minimize the number of people coming to campus. So. And it's like anything else, our users turn to their favorite um, tool of choice, which is Excel, to collect this information. And um, it was really called the monster. It was really nicknamed the monster. And it was really a, an Excel sp spreadsheet from Hades. And no matter how they locked it down and told the users not to add columns, don't change the data types, not to change columns. Uh, you know, they kept doing it. So it, it made analysis of the data impossible. 
So, and St. Jude implemented a swabbing program on campus and off campus and developed its own mobile app that we had to access each day to come to campus. We would answer the screening questions and it would tell you whether or not it was, you know, you were red, yellow, or green. Red indicated you couldn't come on campus. Yellow, it was your time to be tested. Um, and this app also served as our hall pass. Uh, which we had to show to a guard every time we entered a college, uh, entered a building. But leadership was concerned that we had people that weren't following our campus protocol and needed a way to identify um, those people. And also we wanted to replace um, the monster. So leadership turned to IS and I was introduced to Dave from Cam Bay and we set out to create a, a proof of concept using the power platform. We identified seven data sources that we needed to extract data from to meet the leadership's objective. And the goal of the POC was to provide the data needed to analyze if a person was coming to campus and shouldn't for a variety of reasons. If a person was coming to campus, had they been approved to come to campus, been trained on campus protocols, and were they being swabbed? I I personally have been swabbed 37 times throughout this pandemic. Um, the team built a model driven app, which I'm sure that you'll be introduced sometime during this on hand um, during this session. Using the model driven app, um, a user could view the data, sort it, search, and the information could easily be downloaded into Excel if people wanted to. And we could also use it as a source for our Power BI dashboards. The proof of concept, the proof of concept was so successful, they requested we work with them to design something on the platform to collect remote worker agreements because, as you know, payroll is all based on where you live, and so we wanted to be sure everybody understood what their um, what they were required to do. Um, so we built a Canvas app, and that Canvas app walked the person and the supervisor. Um, through the screens they needed to fill out and questions they needed to answer. And each supervisor could only see the people that they directly supervise or indirectly supervise. And once the um, forms were filled out, they could submit it and the supervisor and the employee needed to sign using DocuSign. So we integrated our the Power Platform with DocuSign. Once signed by both, the completed document is then filed away in HR, and we also used a power automate job to kick off if a person um, moved um, from what we had in HR <clears throat> so that another remote worker agreement would needed to be um, filled out. HR estimates that that the process saved about six months of labor because otherwise they would have had to contact each person individually and go through the whole process. And so that was extremely successful. And last but not least, our latest creation was a process to track a person's accommodation or vaccination status because on September 10th, um, a person has to be vaccinated to enter our campus. So that just went into effect last week. And we've also kicked off other projects with Cambay. We are also working on a space management process with them, but we, we've been extremely successful with the Power Platform and um, the, the tool is a great tool. We're, we're still learning, but with Cambay's help, I think we're gonna be able to do a lot more. So, and that's it for me, <laughs> so. Wow, Todd, that was that was really amazing. Um, you know, one question I do have, and I think that this is something that a lot of folks um, will be talking about today, uh, is in relation to the si like six months that you saved, the six months of labor, right, from HR. There was a cost to that, right? And and I'm sure that was that one of like the main things, like how do we justify the cost of doing this? What is the ROI? Was that kind of how you looked at it a little bit, or did you take yeah, that into consideration? And, and it was all about saving time. We didn't really look at the cost, because, and, and a lot of that had to be because HR is involved in so many things at St. Jude, and um, and so just being able to take this off of them 
gave them the ability to focus on other things. And so I and we're lucky in that our campus is completely closed. It has a fence all the way around it. And so we could easily control access to our campus. But once you got on campus, we needed to be sure you were following the protocols. And, you know, were you educated on the protocols, right? And so we could reach out to those people because we knew what buildings they they clocked into, what buildings they used their access to get into. So all that data was on Power Platform. So it was just a one shop stop for our for leadership and others to be able to keep um, tabs on what was going on in their area. So it was it was extremely helpful. Oh, that's great. And the time, right? I guess there's yeah, there's there's two things. It's um sometimes we get buried in these mundane tasks that have been created over time, right? They're like, oh my gosh, now we've got 12 things. Or even having somebody like have to walk across campus, right, to give a piece of paper. And we don't think of that. But using Power Automate and Power Apps have probably helped you really kind of conceptualize how we could save time. Save oh, yeah. Yeah. And it did. And it really did a lot of lot to help us. And we're we see lots of we just signed a Microsoft five year EA renewal. And so we expect to do a lot more with the Microsoft uh, stack. So but yeah, it, and I, to be honest, um, some of this would have never happened if it hadn't been. I mean, none of us wishes the pandemic was here, but because of the pandemic, it forced us to think of other ways, new and uh, better ways to do things like electronic signature with DocuSign, using the Power Platform. Those things would have never happened <laughs> if it hadn't been, because it's just we're old school. We're we're creatures of habit, right? So yeah, yeah. I think for the first time, so I'm only I'm only 47. I like to say that, but for the first time. I've noticed like some change is starting to bother me. I, I see what my dad used to say, what's going on with all those change? I, you know, I hate this change. And I was like, dad, it's part of the, you know, but now I see it, right? Like <laughs> stop changing, right? But, but you know, we go through that, but that, that's really amazing, Todd. And you're right to the pandemic, we're, we are not going back to the way it was. We're just not. And this is really, it's accelerated the idea of how can we use some of these tools to like better our lives, right? Or, or uh, make you're absolutely right. Is is you know I have I have I have an employee that works for me in California and one in Pennsylvania, and so we've gotten we've had to get a lot more creative with how we use tools to interact with them, um, and the Power Platform has been a part a big part of that. How do you collect information and signing of documents easier? Uh, because people aren't on campus, right? So, oh, that's great. And the last thing for this is for the audience. What you heard today is really it's a case study, okay, of what how can they help them actually use this power platform. We're going to be going over a bunch of these different things. But what's interesting is that a lot of this, because it's in under Microsoft Stack, it just connects together. So there is a a portion of this is Power Automate, and then there's also Power App that was involved together to do it. So, Todd. I want to say thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I mean, we, and we don't want to take too much of your time today because you're very busy and it's very, very gracious of you to come on today. So thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay. See you. All right, so let's get started. My name is Sherman Cranzer. I'm your facilitator for the day. Uh, we uh, work for Cam Bay uh, here. Um, just give you some uh, background on myself. I spent last five, I was spent about five and a half years at Microsoft as an executive there and uh, uh, today, uh, what my job is, is to help shepherd you through. I'm like the person who's leading the, the caravan down the trail, right? Um, I'm going to shepherd you through. So there's three different ways of learning today. Uh, uh, there's the death by PowerPoint. Uh, and I would like to tell everybody, I am classically trained to uh, put you to sleep with 175 pages. Uh, I did this for five years at Microsoft, uh, but I, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do any slides, actually. The slides that you saw today were the last ones that you're going to see. Uh, let me go ahead and and, and uh, uh, shift gears here. Let me go ahead and put up uh, a different different uh, deck here. Um, so there's three ways. I, I, I mentioned I mentioned the three different ways. Um, so there's one is is the death by PowerPoint, which we put you to sleep and you leave with about two percent understanding of what's going on. 
Uh, the second way is uh, the, the, the learn by watching, which is you could do that today. Some of you may want to just watch and that's OK. However, it's very difficult to learn that way. I'm going to be doing something. Or the third way is you come into what's called a customer immersion experience, a Microsoft customer immersion experience where we provide you access to um, a hands on lab environment. So you don't have to mess up your own environment. You can mess up ours. We'll fix it. Uh, but you're going to learn by doing so what I my job is to take you through the tour, tell you to click here, click here, click here, click on this one, do this, type in this. That's what my job is. Your job, uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, you can do whatever you want because we are, we're sometimes free spirits here. However, to get the most out of this, we love this whole idea of muscle memory, clicking and doing and seeing and going. Now, for those who choose to participate, um, I'm gonna, at the end of every exercise, I'm gonna be asking you to come back to the conversation and say, good to go. OK, good to go. And we'll kind of go ahead and, and, and start uh, with that. Now, the the um, I think you should all be at the uh, office dot com. Uh, perfect. OK, so one thing I'd like to do, and this is kind of like a first like action item for everybody here. If you could go back to the conversation window and maybe type in something that you're looking to learn today or want to know more about or just say I'm new. OK, because this way it's going to help me level set how fast or slow I can go with this group. I, I need to kind of get a picture of where people are. So maybe just say you want to, a new perfect or this is what I came to learn or I just want to just kind of understand it. OK, so it looks like we have a lot of new. OK, very new. OK, Karen, no problem. OK, OK, OK. Well, you know, it looks like we have a, a, a good class here. Uh, this is fantastic. This is great. I'm going to go ahead and shut my door over here. Um, OK, OK. So with that being said, what we're talking about today is the Power Platform, OK? We're going to be going over Microsoft Teams uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to do Power Automate, where we're actually going to create an actual Power Automate uh, flow that you're going to do too, and you're going to see how this all works, OK? Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put in a, a Power Apps a deal on Power Apps, OK? Uh, we're going to do about 15 minutes on Power Apps. We're going to create our own expense uh, application as well as our own uh, trouble ticket application is pretty cool. We'll do two of those inside of there. Uh, and then we'll get into Power BI, business intelligence, which is um, you know data mining, building a modern data warehouse. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and uh, then we'll get into the power of virtual agents, chatbots. We'll kind of go there. There's a lot of information we're going to get in hit through today uh, and possibly even voice over IP. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So let's get into it right away. Let's get started. OK, so if you're at the office.com menu, uh, the first thing I want you to go is top uh, is, is see the all the different apps that are located on the left hand side. I want you to go down to the very bottom left hand corner and it says all apps. These are the it's like four boxes. One box is about kind of being uh, taken apart. And then this is going to show us all of the applications that we have available inside of our Office 365 account or M365. Now, just real quickly, you know, 2016, or 17 was the last time they printed 2016 single use licenses. If you have Office 365, you have a download access to five different um, you know, downloads of all of these products. And then you know, with Office 365 came, came this innovation, right? And as you can see here, this is where all of the apps are. Now there's a third iteration of Office 3 or second iteration of Office 365 called M365. It's called Microsoft 365. And that's really what Office 365 is. However, M365 comes with certain um, uh, security features such as multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, and that kind of stuff, right? Um, so I just want to kind of uh, read you in on that one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and click on, when you see Microsoft Teams, go ahead and click on that. It's going to open up the web application, and that's okay. Uh, mine says uh, cannot connect, but it's just uh, circling through here. So one second. Come on, let's reload this. OK, so Teams Online, I'm going to give you some pro tips along the way too. OK, so Teams on your desktop is awesome. Great, but it's a it's a CPU hog, OK, um, it, it, and a memory hog. It's about 40 percent of your utilization as well as uh, Outlook, and that takes about 40 percent too. So if you notice, if you have two uh, of these applications running on your desktop and the fan comes on within 10 minutes of you starting the computer, and you're like, why is the fan coming on so fast? That's the reason why. So we actually tell people, hey, you know, use Outlook online or use Teams online. It'll save up computer power. A lot of people don't know that, but just want to show you. Okay, let's do a brief overview of Microsoft Teams. 
Teams is uh, really the new way of collaboration here, right? So the way I look at it is, you know, um, it's really the replacement for Outlook. Outlook has become very cumbersome, right? Just very cumbersome. Um, and, uh, you know, the Outlook is being used for a lot of things. Um, now, instead of being just, uh, you know, the, the basic form, which it was supposed to be meant for, one email, right, to one person, long form, 27 years ago, uh, really hasn't evolved in 27 years. Microsoft hasn't. And now people are using it for chats. They're using it for to-do lists. Or sending, they're using it to save files or share files with people. It's just completely like it's gone out of control. And I don't know if anybody here has that, has that problem. But what we want to do today is just kind of talk to a little bit about you know, use, use of Teams. If you're not using it today, you really should. Okay. We do have a Teams training that is in-depth that after an hour and a half, you become a power user. However, today we're just doing a brief gloss over over Microsoft Teams. So it's a new way to collaborate, okay? It's challenging, right? But it's a new way to collaborate. It's a new way to organize files. Okay, I'm gonna, I have a, a, a bit of a, a story here, but uh, see where it says, I just wanna show you, see where it says the hands, uh, this little hand icon on your Teams? Uh, go here, give me likes or, or raise your hand if you have any questions. So I just wanna show you there. Okay, so I, I, the first thing I'm gonna mention, uh, awesome, Chris, and thank you. So I'm going to ask you all a question. If if you suffer from the same bad habit or disease, I don't know which one you want to call it. My disease is a little apropos for this day and age, right? But same ha bad habit that I have. Um, so my bad my bad habit is, I take a file, I create a word document, right, and then I got to go to save as. I'm like, ooh, save as. I need to create my own special folder, right? So then I go in there and I create like the super awesome folder. And then I'm like, where am I gonna put this? This is my, in my head, this is the, where am I gonna put this folder, right? And then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna put this in a special place, right? And then I come back a week later and I'm like, where is this special folder? I have no idea, or I totally forgot. Who here suffers from that, that, that same bad habit, or I would say uh, curable, uh, uh, curable issue, so. Uh, Kristen, okay, all right, thank you, Kristen. Uh, I'm gonna say that I am 100% uh, in the same boat. So I think that's one of the very first things just to share uh, inside of Teams. If everybody can go up and, and just type in, in the search bar on the very top, just type in sales, right? And then what I want you to do is hit enter, okay? Um, and the reason why I wanna push sales and enter here is because uh, so when, when I do this, it's an easy way to find files. So if you start, instead of sending files via Outlook, you, you, you store them inside your Teams account, you can find things. So check this out. When I said uh, messages, I can click on this message, right? And then, oh, this is an approval, okay? This is a, uh, as an approval. But if I go to files, this is what I really think, think is pretty awesome. Any file that I have inside of Teams that says has sales in it, Will be located there. Now, what if I what if I were to type in? Go ahead and type in document. This is another one that's actually pretty good. I push enter. So this is going to tell me that every message that I have that has document in it, or any file that has document in it, is basically going to be uh, located here, as well as any messages that have document in it, right? So I can click on any one of these messages. These are all approvals that I needed to make that from our class yesterday, right? So I can submit this. So. Kind of cool, right? So this, that's really uh, you know the first thing to, to learn about Teams is that it's a new way to organize and, and share documents. All right, on the left-hand side, um, uh, there's a, a bunch of five different uh, sections here. So the first one I just want to clear up is activity. A lot of folks here don't know what that is or really reason why you should do that, but I would tell you that this is the main thing um, that you should uh, be doing every morning when you come in because what happens is, you know, and, and this is a real world scenario, right? We had St. Jude on, you know, three months ago, you got a, a notification on your cell phone that said, hey, um, your COVID test is ready. A lot of us said, okay, let's go. And we went there, right? But did we come back? It was like after two o'clock. No, we didn't. The majority of us did not come back uh, for this. Um, and so what happens in Teams, people are gonna be sending you messages and different things. And what's gonna be happening is uh, your, your, anything that you missed is gonna be in bold inside of activity. So kind of cool, right? So I could click on this one, this is in bold, and this is a message and I'm having a little trouble uh, spinning it up. But if it was just a regular message, it would be, it would be there, right? Um, so you can click through anything in bold you missed. Um, these are all approval processes. So as you can see here, this is what I missed, right? So this is an approval, right? I can cancel the request. So these are just the different things, okay.
Awesome. So perfect. OK. All right. Dismiss. Now, the next one I want to click on is, is chat. Chat is so much more uh, than just basic chat, right? It, it is really something else. And you know, you can you you can do basic chat, but this is the first way you want to reduce your your email by about thirty percent. Is you know, you want to uh, let people know, hey, stop sending me chats in my email. Start sending me chats, um, you know, via the Teams chat. So how I've reduced my email by by about forty percent is all the people we work with, I say, stop sending me an email, just send me a chat, you know, send me something here if it, or, or put a task or to do, right? So you can do that, but you can do group chats, right? We can do, we can uh, add, uh, so to, for example, uh, you know, I can, I can format a chat, right? Teams training, right? You're not gonna use this one very much, right? But if I bolded that, and then let's say I wanted to highlight that perfect, I could do that. Or, and then, you know, I can, uh, you know, put some, right? Right, and then I can push send. So that's kind of cool there. We can attach a file, you know, from from our OneDrive if we wanted to. If it's connected, um, we can also send urgent messages, add gifts. Um, one of the coolest things that I, I do love about about chat is it when I want when I want to schedule a meeting, um, I, I just go down to schedule a meeting and it automatically populates, uh, you know, like who I was chatting with. So if you have a group chat, one of the coolest things. But a group chat is you can schedule a meeting with all of them just by using that small functionality. OK, so that's really chat. Super awesome. Let me show, click on Teams. This is the first one that I need you to pay a tiny bit of attention here. OK, um, and what I mean by this is the, you know, Teams and channels can somebody be very confusing because they have absolutely nothing to do with each other which is like, come on, right? Uh, so uh, let me just kind of give you the, 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 the basic, you know, a team, okay, should be the company that you're working in, okay? So the very first team is your company, right? Uh, and then the second, uh, the channels are your departments inside of the company. That's how you want to look at it. So for example, if we're in Contoso, the company, we had Contoso would be the team and the channels would be uh, uh, marketing, sales, HR, you know, operations, manufacturing, R&D, those would be the channels. And what you want to do is have everybody, let's say who's in marketing, go to the Contoso website and then go to the marketing channel. Now, the channels are where everybody in that department collaborate together and store files. OK, score files. OK, um, awesome. So, Kristen, I'm sorry. Uh, I got the same error message. What, what is the error message you have? You can unmute. Mine just wouldn't load, and then when I hit the refresh button, it took me back. So um, I'm actually a little bit familiar with Teams. We use it on a regular basis, so I'm following along that you're showing us the best practices okay, okay. and how to use Teams, and there's not too much interaction for anybody else that's having the similar problem. Um, you know, you guys could just see the best ways, best practices to use. OK, awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. OK, cool. Um, all right. Let's, let's uh, so that's really teams right now. The way we teach it in our power user thing, we actually get into each team and we, we add applications to make it good. We create templates. There are a lot of best practices behind this. Now, what I'm going to give you a pro tip number two. There's this thing called uh, teams creep. OK, and you'll be really careful with this. This is when people get aware about teams and all of a sudden you get added to every team uh, on, uh, you know, that, that people have, you know, ability to, to answer. Right. And um, uh, the thing was, uh, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. Um, you need to put a policy in the back end, OK, that says and you can't do this very simply. Any team that has no activity, that means nobody's come in there, no one's done anything for 30 days, gets a soft delete, right? The owner of the team gets a message saying, hey, check this out, no activity. Would you like to keep the team or would you like to delete it? Okay, this is a best practice. Uh, when I was at Microsoft, after we kind of figured it out, we rolled out teams like six months. Then they really trained us six months later. We're like, oh, this is how you use it. And the next thing you know, I was a member of like 50 teams, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So, um, you know, the teams creep thing is, is actually pretty important. Okay, uh, last one, last cool feature I'm going to show you, and then we're going to get into Power Automate, okay? Uh, is this new feature just came out, it's called Teams uh, Webinar. So if you go to the uh, Teams calendar and you go to a new meeting, it says webinar here, check this out. We can do a webinar, like literally create a webinar. Uh, and this is the Zoom killer, okay? 
Um, so if I do Teams webinar, okay, for example, and I do a presenter, uh, and I can do CIE four, right? CIE four is the is the presenter, right? Um, but let me show you what's really cool about this. What I love about this is you always have that one person, or there's some people like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, people to know my, my my contact information, my email. And it's like, hey, dude, check this out. You know, anybody can get your email at, at, at right now. That's over. That's like so ten years ago, right? What you should be protecting is your social security number, not your email. Like, like that's how everyone gets a hold of everybody now. It's like a phone number. Come on. Anyway, but there's people who don't like that, so we get it. So what webinar does is when they have this event right here, we have this event, right? We have the details, right? And we can add a speaker. It could be CIE4, right? That's going to be the speaker. Uh, and we can upload a quick image here. Uh, but I just want to show you this really quickly. I'm going to go to pictures. Uh, I'm going to grab uh, the Yosemite trees that I took. Okay. It's going to look a little weird. But let's let's try that one. Okay, done. It looks a little stressed out, but boom. Okay, so we have this image here, right? And if I push save, perfect. So now check this out. If I could view it in browser, it's gonna open up another another tab. And look at that. Kind of cool, right? Um, just super awesome. So everyone gets their own invitation and, and they're all private. I love it. We get the registration list, get a lot of really cool things in there. So that's really, I just want to show that to you uh, in there in Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna go ahead and close it um and discard and then the last thing i to mention is, is calls this is where you're going to get uh, um uh either you know pst and dialing or calling in but we'll go over that a little bit later awesome okay all right randy no problem now this is where the, the, i was just doing a quick tour so it's okay it's okay now what i do need to do is make sure everyone is here at the office.com site so randy and uh kristen uh can you make sure that you tell me that if you're at the office.com site where you see the different forms. OK, Kristen's good. Randy, you can unmute. And like it or just give me a thumbs up. Randy's not. He's having the same problem. OK, uh, so Randy, if you can uh, just refresh your screen. Remember, you have to go to a guest browser, right? or incognito or in private, you go to office.com, you use the credentials we gave you, then you should be here. Okay, I need to pause here. Any questions for Teams? Okay, so Karen, uh, you probably have, you're probably at the home button right here. Okay, you have this like, different list. What I want you to do, Karen, is go to the bottom left-hand corner, okay, and um, click on all apps. OK, so James, when my status is available in Teams, but if I'm reading something on my laptop after a few minutes, my status will change to appear away or will not change back until I move the mouse. Why can't I have it stay to available? Well, that's a good question. So that's a back end setting that they put on for you. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it does that, um, but that is something in the back end that, that your Teams admin uh, maybe had imposed or uh, out of the box. It is that way we can actually help you uh, with, with the, or can they can actually help you with that um yeah that, that can be really annoying <laughs> that can be really annoying okay so randy are you here at the office and then karen did you did you get to the all apps different name yeah office 365 do you, is your screen exactly the same as mine Karen, if you can come off mute for a second. Okay, Randy, you're good. Okay, good. Okay, are you in the same screen that I'm in? You're probably at home. You're probably looking at this, it says Office 365. I want you to go all the way to the very bottom left-hand corner. There's this little all apps box. If you see on my screen, click on that and then you'll get here. Okay, or just follow along. On the, uh, at this point, so I got to get, I got to get, you make sure we get in, in the line. Okay, so our first thing we're going to hit up is uh, Power Automate. So we see where it says Power Automate. I want you to go ahead and click on Power Automate. Okay, this is awesome. So we heard about the case study today, right, of, of doing Power Automate, right? Another case study, we had a, a, a client 
that um, had a approval process to buy a computer, okay, as a, as a university, and it took them uh, 12 days to approve it, right, uh, to, to approve a simple computer request. And they were so backlogged, they had over 850 requests that they were not going to be able to furnish the computers for the faculty to almost the end of the uh, of their school year. So they came to us and they said, okay, how do we do this? And we use a power automate flow to take those 12 days and reduce it to two. And that's using DocuSign, just like they did with St. Jude, doing all these things. So that's really what, what Power Automate is going to do. It, 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 it really helps us free up some time. So today we're going to be going over uh, how to review. Um, uh, we have some templates that we're going to do. We're going to start an approval in Teams, right? We're going to do this. Uh, but, but there's just so much you can do here. So let's just take a quick tour. Uh, on the left hand side, you have this menu, right? Right. So we have action items under home. We have action items. And this could be if you create an approval process, right? This is where you're going to show a lot of approvals that you have to do. Like, for example, this is what we did yesterday. So I can approve that one, right? I can go through these approval processes. This you're not going to use very much because we want to do it somewhere else. This would probably just take too long to do. OK, but I just want to send you that, right? So we have sent approvals. We have history on our approvals. These are different action items that we have. OK, next um, you go ahead and click on my flows. OK, now when you click on my flows. I'm going to disable this one, so I'm going to go ahead and push um, turn off. These are all the flows that you created. OK, so just once again, my flows. OK, what you created. OK, next is um, the create function. So everyone, please click on the plus section. It says plus create. And this is kind of a combination of uh, this and templates together. So one of the neatest things about Power Automate, right, is anybody can do it. It's a low code, no code environment. So the simple ones, anyone can do it. And what I'd like to guide you to is actually click on the one that says email, okay? Because this is something that I'm gonna give you some homework to do on your own. It's a simple Power Automate gives you an idea. Now, when you're doing like this approval process or you're doing the St. Jude's case study that we just talked about, that's when it gets really tricky, okay? Because it's, but we're gonna just show you kind of the simple flows of things so you kind of have an understanding. But when you get into the, the business process thing, you're gonna really wanna make sure that you work with somebody who knows what they're doing, okay? Because there's a lot of connectors uh, there. But what's really cool here is like, for example, we can save at outlook.com email attachments to your OneDrive if you wanted to, right? Uh, because you, you know, you may, you know, just, it may just, it, it filters everything for email attachment, boom, goes into OneDrive, much easier way to find things, okay, that, that you had, right? Or save email attachments from outlook.com to Dropbox. So let's say you're a Dropbox user, you can do that. And what that shows you, hey, well, there's other connectors that are available, right? Save Gmail attachments to Dropbox folder. Now that's another solution that is completely outside of Microsoft, but there's a way to do it, right? You can use Power, save Gmail, G wait a minute, Gmail attachments, that's not Microsoft, or to Dropbox, wait a minute, that's not Microsoft, but really cool. Daily reminders from your outlook.com, you literally will click on this and you'll get through. So there's really cool things. You can also just do blank ones, right? And on the top, right? Automate cloud flow or instant cloud flow or schedule a cloud flow. This is where you get into the nitty gritty. But what I love about this and Power Automate, it really helps you uh, with a low code, no code scenario. So it's almost infinite the amount of things you can do. You know, like one thing that we're working on is that webinar, right? So we get webinar registrants. Well, they get an automatic email, but they don't get any follow up email. So what we're going to do is because webinar, um, the sign up registration is on a Microsoft form, we're going to say, OK, anybody who hits that form registers, goes into the form. OK, three days later, they're going to get an email saying, thank you so much, reminder, blah, blah, blah. And then three days later, thank you so much, reminder, blah, blah, blah. Right. So we're going to create our own recurring email stream for our people. Think about that, right? So kind of cool. Um, I have absolutely, uh, and these flows are, I've never used and 365 office. Okay. So what a, what a flow, Randy, what a flow is, uh, or what a, what a automate flow is, is how do we make our lives easier and faster with our processes? Okay. So like I, what I mentioned to you, you, you have Outlook. I'm sure you have Outlook. If you don't have Outlook, if you never use Outlook, you have Gmail or Yahoo. It's an, it's an email, right? Imagine if you're getting 200 emails a day and out of those emails, you're getting 10 attachments, but it gets frustrating trying to find those attachments. So what Power Automate does, it says, hey, 
let's let let me help you filter all those emails and whatever attachments they're in, they grab it, the attachments, and they put it into another folder for you. That's what Power Automate is in its basic, most basic form. However, what if I had 20 teams and I wanted to take an, an and let's say an attachment comes in from Gmail. I grab that attachment with the Power Automate, and then I take that attachment and I post it to 20 separate SharePoint folders so that everybody in those teams gets, gets that email attachment. That's a trick way of doing it. But it, what it's all about conceptually is how do I make things better faster? Another real world scenario is, okay, I'm traveling from you know Milwaukee to California, right? And I'm always told that this is the only route to go. Well. Power Automate could conceptually say, well, these are all the routes to go. Let's use AI to find you the best route, right? That's making your life easier. That's what Power Automate and Power Apps really is. Okay. So if you look over here on the left hand side, um, uh, you have templates, you have connectors. I just want to show you connectors really quick. Click on connectors. Okay. What connectors are, are just basically other software as a service. Uh, applications and basically what we do here in these software as a service applications is you have like OneDrive, right? You have to sign into OneDrive, you have to sign into tw uh, Twitter, right? Sign into Salesforce. In the past, you had to write all this code, right? And you had to find what's called an API connector, and you had to like you know actually configure it and code it and put it together. These days, Microsoft has already done a lot of that for you, so it's all about getting those connectors and, and just selecting one. So if you screw, see this Discord, look at that Discord connector, Hashify, UK Bank Holiday connector. There's a lot of Microsoft ones, Project Online, FTP, Salesforce. There's so many things you can do. And so it's, conceptually, you just want to figure out how to do it. Okay, I get that in a more basic course, so as not to distract other people here that gain more from you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Randy, that'd probably be a good idea. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So everybody here, um, the, the AI builder. Okay. Let's go to create, please. Go to the create. We're going to get our own for first here. Uh, we're going to create our own our own um, our own thing. Um, a couple things that we can do here. Uh, we can deploy lists and libraries from Power Automate. We can populate a list or migrate a simple Excel table. We can provision Azure Active Directory. We can do an automated approval process, which is awesome. And so what I want you to do after you push create, top right hand corner, to start an approval in Teams when a file is added to SharePoint folder. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, so now let me go ahead and uh, increase the font here just so that you guys can see. Okay, now you see where it says the flow connect to? If you don't have a check box, just push connect or approval. Okay, if you don't have one, but you should because we've been doing this already. When you have five green check boxes, go to the continue, please. Okay. Okay, so now we want to select a SharePoint site to monitor. So do the downward uh, chevron, okay? And what I'd like to do, okay, is go to where it says sales team. Click on sales team. Does everybody have sales team in the drop down? If you, if you don't, please come to the conversation window. And let me know if you don't have it. So I'll open up SharePoint and get the. Um... Okay, I'm going to put in the conversation window here. That's that would be the uh, the uh, thing for sales team. OK, perfect. OK. OK, all right, all right, all right. So we're we're um, at the uh, SharePoint. OK, uh, we, and now we, we have a select a, a SharePoint list to monitor. I want you to click on documents, please. We're going to leave the next one blank because we just wanted to collect anything that gets put in documents. OK, so we'll leave that there. And then we need to select users or groups to assign the approval to. OK, so this is where I want you to type in info. Info at. And you can see it says Sherman Crancer uh, as your direct. OK, and then I want you to type in yours. OK, so if you're CIE 1, CIE 2, CIE 3, so I'm going to do CIE 3. Right, and I can say that's the approval. OK, because what we're going to do is send you the approval to you're going to see how this approval works. So please, whatever credential you're assigned, CIE 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. Now I want you to push create. OK, now after you've created this, please come back to our conversation window and type in good to go when you get to this screen. OK. 
Karen, you know what we're going to send you? Uh, we have a, a basic Teams one first. That's going to uh, that's going to clear up just so much. You and Randy, okay? Uh, Microsoft Teams, um, and that's basic. Come to that one, and you'll love it. Okay, thank you, Karen. Karen, appreciate it. Okay, everyone here, we're good to go. Come back to the conversation window. Put in good to go that we've made it this far. Does anybody need any help? Can you guys hear me? Did I lose everybody? No, you're good. Okay, okay. Okay, Kristen's got the hands up. How about uh, Henry or Cy or Anthony? You guys uh, make it this far? Anthony Nixon or Sima? On the create tab, I'm not able to Okay, so you want me to you want me to walk you through it again? I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Yes, please. Yes, okay. Please. Okay, let's 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 walk you through it again. Okay. So if we're at office.com, we click on power automate. Okay. Then when you're in power automate, there's this thing called create. So it says create. Click on, on create. You see it? Do you see it? Yes, I'm on the same page now. Okay. Click on create. And then on the right hand side where it says start an approval in Teams, click on that. Okay. Okay. And then when you have this, push continue. Okay, for me, it's uh, grayed out actually. Okay. The continue button. It's grayed out. Okay, so you have you have to indicate something. Maybe you have to say uh, uh, um, when you have here. Make sure it's updated. Yeah. So for this only, I have uh, uh, for the Office 365 and Microsoft Teams. I have a, a red mark there. Okay. So validate the connection. Sai, do you want to show your screen? Yes, yeah, just give it this. Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, I'm not able to share my screen because it has it's, uh, only meeting organized present can share. I have the button as. Okay, one, one moment. I'm sorry to make you a presenter. Okay, you're good now. Go ahead, you can do it. You're a presenter now. Uh, yeah, let me know once you're seeing. So you can see that. Oh, so perfect. For only approvals, I have the uh, green mark. For everything says fixed connection, something like that. Go ahead, push fixed connection. Okay, keep going down. Or see what they do here. Okay, okay, keep keep going. And do the same thing with the other one too. Okay. okay, and what about the first one, the Office 365 users? Uh, yeah, okay. go ahead. Yep, now I got it now. Perfect. Okay, keep continue. Okay, so the folder we want, yeah, is uh, sales teams. Perfect. Um, we're going to do documents. Okay, leave that one blank. And then the last one, type in info at Azure Direct. Info. Okay, it'll come up. There you go. Click on that one. Click on Sherman Crancer. There you go. And then type in, uh, type in uh, CIE, uh, whoever you are. Yeah, CIE. Uh, what is your number? Okay, CIE one three. Yeah, 
Perfect. OK, and push create. Awesome. OK, you're in good good shape. Now let's let's show everybody here. Go to the top left hand corner and says edit. I want you to click on edit. I'm going to show everybody here. So what this is, th this is going to show you like the basic flow. As you can see here, we haven't done anything just yet, so we haven't actually got it. But it's when it when a file is added to a SharePoint folder, then it's going to get your profile. Then it's going to create an approval, right? And it's going to send you an email approval as well as adding it to Teams. And when that's approved, then it's going to send out. But this is like a basic flow chart. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of really big, complicated ones that might have 20 different branches to the trees, and it kind of goes there. Where it really helps to understand what you're doing is, is in working with a partner like Canbay is a lot. Sometimes these trees just break. They just do. And that's just the reality of it. So, um, OK, so let's go back. Go back to the back button, top left hand corner. OK, perfect. OK, so now what we've done here, right? We've actually created this flow. OK, so now what we need to do is I want you to go um, back over to office.com. Uh, over to off perfect okay and i want everybody to go to sharepoint open up sharepoint okay okay now when sharepoint comes up we're going to click on the sales teams that's where we put it right sales team just click on that site okay and what we're going to do on the sales team right uh, i want you to go to documents OK, and then in documents, um, what we have here uh, is um, I want us to create a new document. So go to the new and just type in Word document or yeah, click on the Word document. OK, now we're going to go ahead and create a test document. So just put in like literally test document. You don't have to do too much to it. OK, um, and then we want to rename it. OK, um, and then no, actually, uh, uh, no, 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 that's not where we go. Click back to the white page. OK, see on the top where it says document saved on the top uh, on the blue bar. Click there and that's where you change the name in there. OK. And then we can literally just after you do that, uh, you can change the name there if you want. OK, and just click out of that. Just click to the right where the test document was. Perfect. OK, now go ahead and just close this tab. You can close this tab. We don't need, we need to be there anymore. OK, so what I want to show you. OK, is that we've actually done that, right? We, we, we put a document inside. So now what I want you to do, go back to office.com. OK, um, oh, actually, you have your team still open. Go to the Teams tab. OK, and then go to Activity. OK, let's uh, actually refresh the screen. OK, now look at that. Check that out. OK, now you see that now I want you to click on it. OK. So now see this is an approval. We put that document in there, right? And this is an approval. The CIE 17 put this in there and then you can you can actually approve that actual request. Uh, you can go down to approve and boom, now you have it approved. So now that's cool, okay, in, in one respect, right? But now check this out. Let's go over to uh, back to office.com. Okay, go back to office.com and open up Outlook right in the middle, open up Outlook. OK, now go to your inbox. Oh, you are in your inbox. Do you see all those new flows that just came in? Si, check that out. Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? Click on one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Click on one, right? And then when you click on it, it's going to give you the approval process. Scroll down a little bit and then go ahead and push approve. Bam! So now what we've just done here is we've created our own simple power automate. And you see how simple that was? 
to do that simple, sim simple. So it's simple in that respect. However, it just gets complicated when you start doing multiple departments and stuff like that. But the ideation here, and this is what you, some of you guys can do, is you can do some simple ones to kind of figure it out. Okay. All right. So I got a poll that I'm going to go ahead and push here. I love it. If I can just get feedback, I'm really curious what people would be thinking about. How would they use this? Um, let me see. My polls are not coming up here. Uh, Phil, do you have access to the polls? Can you post the poll for what would what application would you use? I'm yeah, let, let me see one second. I'm having, a, I'm having a little memory problem on this one, so one second. Yeah, what? It's, it's the up. one second. Yeah. Power Automate. No, yeah, it's uh, what, what, yeah, for the Power Automate one, yes. So how would your organization leverage Power Automate? So this is, I'm just curious, could you just let me know, like, how would you, now that we talked about it, how would you do that? So I, in, in my case, I would say it's, you know, workflow automation, or even, I would say even a really approval process. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. Um, so have two responses. Yeah, if you guys can just click on what you think there. So one of them's me, okay, five. Okay, so we have task delegation, we got email automation, workflow automation, approval process. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, our last one, we ended up getting more people on the approval process than we got on workflow automation. Anybody else? We'd love to hear your response. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Phil, on that. Now, let's see. Do we have a question here? No. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. Do we have any questions on Power Automate? Okay, wonderful. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so now that we've done Power Automate, the next one is Power Apps. So let's all go back to Microsoft Office, please. Okay, now Power Apps, man, this is so awesome. It's really kind of like, I think Power Automate is like the back end. It's like the gears that are working, but Power Apps really shows, uh, you know, how we can create something that's richly visible, right? So let's go ahead and click on Power Apps. Okay, click on that. So it's a suite of applications, right? It, you know, services and connectors, you know, data platforms that provide a rapid application development environment to customize build apps. So six years ago, I remember creating my first app myself. I didn't want, I, I was like, how do you do it? I, this is when Power Apps just came out and I was able to create a web app that people were able to, uh, you know, kind of come in, they did training. When training one, two, three, four, they saw five videos, they would get five points, they'd get to another you know, training thing. And you know the, the coolest thing about this, it's low code, no code app development, right? Um, and, and that's what we're gonna be walking through a little bit today. So if we take a look at it, um, you know, uh, Power Apps are really problem solvers, right? So we can do, you know, um, we can create apps like an employee onboarding app, an expense approval app, right? To approve expenses, a service request app, a return to workplace app, or a crisis communication app. So let's get right into it. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the home, we have the learn. I love this learn place, right? We can click on apps. That's where we're gonna end up having to go to. So right now I have a help desk app, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, uh, well, I'll turn it off later. I have an expense application app, right? The create button is where we wanna go. So go ahead and create the create button. Um, but what I also wanna show you here is that there's data and flows and chatbots. We can actually create it from tables and choices, we can, we, you know, whatever you wanted to do, data flows, synapse links, connections, custom connections, gateways, we can use an app to actually bring stuff in very easily. Okay, so when I push create, you're gonna see that we have three of the top ones that you can do create a, a completely blank from Canvas. And remember, applications, when you create an app, it's, it's just windows, right? So you have window one, then when they click on this, what window do they go to? Window two, window three, window four, window five, We've kind of go, you know, through those the different windows, right? These these different windows, and um, that's what we're going to be showing today, okay? And then we add the functionality and buttons and what window does it go to? That's the way you kind of have to think about it. It's like a it's like a tree, it's like a, it's in the tree, right? So tree or branches, tree and branches. All right, so I want you to scroll down, and we're going to use a template today. I want everybody to click on my expense, please, and then just create. It, it can be uh, I'm going to put uh, Sherm. Major expense, okay? So when you do that, okay, go ahead and push create. All 
All right. So now it's going to ask you to authenticate allow and just push allow, please. All right. So what happens is it, it takes you to the Power Apps Studio. OK, so this is kind of neat because the, the template has already kind of created the windows and some of the buttons and the functionality and what goes to where. So you could be theoretically, you can say, OK, you know, I want to create an expense application right, for my people to be able to, to, to track expenses. I'm going to use this template and then I'm going to change some things in it. So, for example, if you are here, OK, then you can go like click on it says my expenses, right? I can rename that. I can put Cam Bay expense okay so i'm just changing the name there right but as i'm i'm so that was the header right but then if you click on any one of these elements you're going to see these different elements and then if you look on the right hand side the studio tells you what the element's doing if it's pointing to something you know if is it is it a hat you know header at you know add icon see where the head add icon is right okay let's see then you can look on the right hand side look at the advanced it tells you where to navigate to, right? Navigate to new expense name. This is the function. And right up here, see where it says hover border. We, we can select what we want to do with this. So it, this can get very granular. It can be, but I'm going to minimize my expenses. And what I, what I want you to click on is go to view report. OK, so if we do view report, we can go inside of here and change any one of these buttons and where it goes to what's going on with it, right? Or let's go to filter date. OK, so filter date. And change that a little bit, right? I can scroll down. I can get into new expense confirmation. I can take that, you know, I can make it bigger. Right, new expense, your report has been submitted. Okay, uh, new line item. So this is basically showing you uh, what you have in here, right? Um, so you have, so this is really the power app. Now, now that we've kind of done that, we've manipulated it, new line item, right? Uh, we can change these things, edit expense report, uh, set up screen, uh, pending reports, edit line. These are all part of the actual studio that's available to you, and these are the functions to do that. But let's say we finish this, this app, okay? Now let's go up to the top left-hand corner and go to file, and then we're going to put Sherman's major expense app. It's going to be in the cloud, and we're going to push save. OK. So now we've saved this, we can go to see all versions. OK, now versions are it's automatically saved because when you when, you, when or not automatically but when you save it, it saves that version, but you can always go back to another version. So what I want to do here is I want to actually click on that actual radio button, right? Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, let me uh, click out of that radio button. I actually want to go to it says play. So go ahead and push the play button, please. Push allow. And then do you see how it, it changed to Canbay expense report? I changed that right now. This is the actual Power Apps uh, uh, address. So this is actually live right now. We can actually go into. So for, for example, go ahead and push the plus button. OK, because now it says create a new, a new expense. OK, uh, food uh, receipt or uh, business meeting okay prover uh, then i have an approval pro an approver so thomas anderson's supposed to do it and what is the cost center well that's for contoso so i can push and create right so this is the food receipt for business and then i need to add a new line item so i'm just going to put you know add a new line item description food receipt ipt category food and beverage cost 125 dollars and 36 cents and then i can push save right now I have this and I can push submit. So now the cool thing, I can the, the actual this, this whole thing is actually working. I have some that are pending, pending, right? I can see some that have been approved, right? And I can click on it. These have been approved. But this is what it's showing you is so I mean, it's easy if you look at, you know, what you have and what you've been doing. Um, but really, in the power app scenario, we can do so much for that. OK, I'm going to pause here. Uh, any questions or any problems getting to this page?
OK, awesome. Awesome. OK, so let me show you this. Um, let's go back to Power Apps, OK, and go back to uh, Create. We're going to create another one, OK? So let's go Create and let's let's see. Um, let's let's see this. Um, is there anyone that wants to do a suggestion and wants to, wants to create? I was going to do a help desk, but maybe we want to create something else. Anybody have any suggestions? You guys are a quiet bunch today. I, I need a little bit more, uh, a little more feedback if possible, please. An out of office. Okay. Let's see, do we have an out of office? Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, let's do that one. Let's go. So, bottom right hand corner, click on the out of office. Okay, out of Office 1610, we can go ahead and push Create. We can do a tablet or we can do a phone one. It's kind of cool, right? So let's just do tablet. Let's see what happens there. Push Create. Okay, so now it's okay. Permissions, okay, allow. So we're gonna allow these these two permissions. So welcome to Power App Studio. Okay, we'll skip this and then we can open up. Okay. So um, maybe we want to kind of re reconfigure some of this here, right? OK, perfect. OK, so this is like our first page, right? Uh, look at the always visible. Let's go to the title screen. OK, set response or start time. OK, let's go to the response screen. Generic business, vacation, personal. So we can go through these different screens, right? And we can add or delete certain things that we feel isn't isn't correct, right? So kind of put this in there. Uh, and then when we're done, uh, we can literally go back up to file, okay? And then save as office, uh, out of office 1610. And then just go ahead and push save, okay? Okay, then you go to see all versions. And now we go and click on play. I'm out, plan to be in the office, create a new one, right? So I can create a new one. I can tell my time. It's going to be nine. We'll do um, to 17. You start to say, OK, uh, 8 AM to let's say you just do 5 PM out of office, uh, please. Um, That's our title. We can do next, right? We can do uh, vacation. Or we can, oh, we'll click on vacation, go next. Um, we can uh, please contact. So we can do uh, none or intermediate. We'll go um, no contact. OK, then we can find Carlos. So we can do CIE one, right? So send a message uh, regarding uh, uh, out uh, of office next and then it kind of gives us a suggestion look at this hi i'm out of office okay so re send responses outside my organization so now we have both of those we submit it uh and now we can uh click on this and then push uh update okay perfect awesome so um select all conflicts uh, clear conflicts and success so we have no conflicts there. We've actually set our own thing. And actually, this has all been connected. I don't know if you noticed, but when we actually selected CIE, you know, we, when we selected who, who it was, it actually went through the directory that we were connected to. So it was much simpler to make that connection. So Kristen, how did, how did you like that? What are, your, what are your thoughts on that one? I really liked it. I think it was awesome. And I figured it was also something that everybody would be using. So it wasn't yes. kind of special to like my organization doesn't do this kind of thing. So very helpful. Very cool. awesome too. Oh uh, yeah, awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and put up that next poll. Let's see if it comes up for me yet. Oh, oh, I think so. Okay. So we have this next poll. Um, and I'm just I'm curious. This is more of a curiosity poll, okay? Uh, of how would you how would you use the Power Apps um, uh, business functions? Like what would you think, right? I think I, or, uh, I would I would personally do a power apps a workflow approval process, but from the group here, 
well, how would you or conceptually what would you think like how would you use it or what would you like to like think about using okay so we have we have a pto request okay i like i kind of like that one right pto request right uh we remember the saint jude one the, the day today right so we have customer service application okay interesting uh workflow pro, uh, approval process we have there. anyone else like to just kind of chime in click on click on that it'd be really awesome Okay. Pretty neat. Okay. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm not just speaking into uh, you know camera here. So uh, awesome. Okay. All right. So we did that. Now let's get into Power BI. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you um, a link into Power BI. Uh, I'm going to put it in the conversation window. Okay. Um, in the conversation window. Let's go to boom. Okay. Let's go to enter. In the conversation window, there's a Power BI link. If you go ahead and click on that link, I'd appreciate it uh, because I want to. That's how you guys can click through. Okay. So Power BI business intelligence. Oh, not O H T T P S. Sorry. If you get the same error, that's the error. Here, I put the hyperlink back in. That's not error driven. OK, let me just go reload. Hold on. OK, so that's what you should be seeing. OK, now one of the things I want to talk about Power BI, um, there are so many data points that are out there. There's thousands of data points right now um, and uh, you know, we're getting it from all sorts of places. We're getting it from streaming analytics. We're getting it from IoT sensors. We're getting it from streaming analytics. We're getting from, you know, your your ERP, your CRM. Your you have Excel spreadsheets right now that you can pull data for. And what Power BI is basically set up there is Power Business Intelligence. It's really being able to say, okay, I've got all of this data, right? And what I want to do is is try to figure out some key insights on that data and then put it into a rich visual you know, platform where I can see what's going on. So ex for example, imagine you're the CEO of a company, you wake up in the morning and you're like, gosh, first thing I wanna do, what is the health of my company? You grab your tablet, you open it up, and you're like, let's say you're the manager of this or the CEO of this healthcare company, you click on overall, right? The first thing you would do, and I want everybody here to click on overall, okay? That's gonna be the first one. And what this is gonna show the, the at CEO is overall right now, today in real time, you know, uh, 702 patients. We have 252 inpatients, 450 outpatients, and average score of four, right? And it tells you risk rate satisfaction. And you can set this up any way you want, but he wants to take a look at, or she wants to take a look at, you know, what's going on in the business today. So imagine yourself being able to do that, but also imagine that you turned on artificial intelligence as well. And so what artificial intelligence is gonna take real world scenarios that are happening right now and forecast six months out for the health of the business. And what I mean by that is, what if all of a sudden this healthcare had Everyone got cured, like or half people just got cured and left the hospital. Well, that's going to affect the finances, right? Well, if they if if fifty percent of, of the of the patients left, what the AI will do is say, okay, well that ha event happened. What does that mean to the power of the business? You know, six months out, right? And and that's the key. Okay, that's where you really make sense out of like of of, of data. Now let me explain data analytics and building a modern data warehouse just a little bit so you kind of understand. Because of the explosion of data, you have all those things that I talked about, right? The, the data points, they're all kind of sitting there, but they're all unstructured data. You have to figure out how to structure it. So building a modern data warehouse is where you take all of the points, whether it's static or dynamic data, whether it's all over the place data, whether it's streaming, and you point it all into a data lake. So call it comes into a data lake. One lake, first lake is right there. It's got all the data, it's all unstructured. You have no idea what to do with it, right? Then you work with a company like Canvay and you take that data and you put it into what's called a data factory. And that data factory is basically taking all that data and the first thing is we're trying to structure the data so it can all be read together. Then in that data factory, you use Synapse Analytics to figure out, okay, out of the data that's now structured, what are the points? Because you could have, you could have a SQL server that has thousands of rows, right? But you want to only look at row 25 through 35 in columns 265, or uh, yeah, row 25, 35 in columns 265 to 270, because we know that's where the data is. 
So you're using this data factory to, to say, okay, that's where it is. And then you pull just that data. So every time your data comes in, it's only pulling that data. And then it puts it into what's called a Azure SQL warehouse. Okay, SQL data warehouse. Now, when it's there, everything is now factored in. It's all massaged. We all know what it is. And then we pull that data straight into what's called Power BI to find these rich visual insights. Okay, so now what I want you to do, go back one more. And now this will really kind of give you a real world scenario. I want you to click on doctors. You see where doctors is? Okay, click on doctors. Now, this is a granular thing. And this could have been like in St. Jude's case, right? If they're still on. Doctors, well, what if you're like, okay, I've got 10 doctors here. I wanna see what each, what each doctor is doing. So for Aaron James, on the left-hand side, we see number of patients, right? Number of inpatients, number of outpatients. Well, let's look at his risky patients. So you see where his risk level? I can click anywhere there. Then I can click on, and so he has four out of 106 patients that are at risk level, four of them are inpatient and 102 are outpatient and the average patient is 1.1, okay? So what I can click back, unclick on that one, I'm back to what his normal thing is. Interesting, I can really dig deep. Okay, what, how about the risk level of, of, of five, right? He's got 18 patients of five and 18 of them are, out, uh, are, are outpatients, right? What are the treatments? Look at the different treatments. We can see these different things. But what if I just click back? Okay. Now, but what if I want to look at Renee Becker? So you go ahead and click on Renee Becker. How many patients does she have? Well, Renee Becker is in dermatology. She only has 61 patients. Uh, out of the 61, though, she's got a high risk level, a four risk level of four, right? And you look at admission and readmission. She's got a really low readmission rate, so she's probably pretty good. Let's go over to Helene or Helen Billis. She's in women's and babies. She's got a, low, a, a number of uh, 11 inpatients. Okay, or number of patients, she has 43, right? The at-risk ones, she's got 77, okay? Why are they at risk? So this is where you, you start going in and start finding, like, well, why are they doing this? What's going on? What are the risk levels, right, that we have here? What are the risk levels? So you can do that. Um, we can go, uh, and I hope that people can kind of understand this, yeah. right? Lower guess satisfaction of our program because we jammed it up with so much because somebody had an idea because probably a couple of outlier guests hey there's not enough to do or okay we had to disable greg's mic sorry greg we had to do that because that was another training that you're on too <laughs> okay so my, my first question here is is how do people feel about this about power bi do, does this make sense uh, to you or any questions about power bi Okay, okay. Um, and I, I, I'm wondering uh, on these tools. So the couple things here, we have, we have one more thing to, to, to talk about today, uh, which is the chat bot, okay? And we got about eight minutes, but I wanna talk to you about, um, about this. Uh, there's an offer that is available to you uh, on here. Uh, Microsoft is providing a $20,000 or up to $20,000 in, um, uh, in um, what's called proof of concept dollars that they that they'll pay um you know the the partner uh to help you with a proof of concept what i mean by that is so for example um that uh university that procurement thing right that we we helped with um that was thirty three thousand dollars to do that that you know from 12 days to two days right well this this proof of concept would knock twenty thousand off that 32 grand for the project really pretty cool actually uh and and it, it's it's only available through certified gold partners uh, like Canbay. Um, but I just want to throw that out there. It's it's free. Uh, we can at least investigate it. Let me go ahead and throw that poll and see if any of you guys want, but I'm gonna go into chatbot in just one second, but let me go ahead and launch this last one here. Um, you know, would you be interested in learning more about that Power Platform 20K POC offer uh, for eligible customers? Just go ahead and and uh, put yes or no. It, it's fine too. If you know it's a credit, but yes, you know, let us know. Uh, because we'll contact you afterwards. We'll show you how to do it. But it's just a proof of concept. So you can do a power automate, a power work for, you can do you know a bunch of different things. We're happy to to help help you along with that. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll give you the information. For those who don't want that, no problem. Okay, uh, but please go ahead and uh, put in there yes or no, and uh, we'll contact you afterwards uh, about, so it's $20,000 in free services basically to do something. Now it's uh, and there's, there's no no obligation to Microsoft to do it or implement it afterwards, but you know, kind of cool. Okay, let me show you my own chat bot here. This is what's really cool um, on this. So let me get down to um, 
my thing here. And we're gonna go about two minutes over. I'm so sorry, but I, I, I just gotta, I wanna make sure I, I give this and I can give it back. Okay, so uh, let me show you my screen, okay? Uh, my screen here. So uh, a real world scenario is uh, we are, um, we help with training for uh, what we call vir virtual training days for Microsoft, okay, for Microsoft. And what's interesting about that is uh, we'll end up um, being on these sessions that have like 1200 people in them. And they're asking us ca uh, questions like, I mean, all these questions, like just, right? And so we had to do, we, we created a, a, a bot, a chat bot. Now the two types of bots, there's the dumb bots, which you see uh, on like auto dealerships that have what's called a knowledge base. And they have like, you know, a hundred questions and a hundred answers. And if somebody types in a question or an answer that doesn't make sense, um, it doesn't, it just says, I don't know. Right. Okay. It doesn't learn from its mistakes. Okay. And uh, uh, what what uh, what a smart bot is is when you put in uh, artificial intelligence, which actually that uh, basically uh, will say, "Hey, um, we can do." Um, uh, it'll learn from the mistake. Learn from sentiment. Somebody gets frustrated, right? So there's two types of bots. One bot you want to have for like internal, and then one for external. But watch this. So we get a th like we get like a hundred questions in like a five minute span. So if I just typed in, you know, what uh, is an avail availability zone? Okay, I'm gonna ask the the chat bot about that. And this is what a recent one we did. I asked Cortez. Hey, Cortez. Now, can, Cortez can have voice. He can have recognition. It says, well, this is what the availability zone. Would you like to see the global infrastructure uh, you know, diagram? Yeah, I would. OK, great. And then it shows us all of this, right? Um, let's see. I can also put in what uh, is IAAS. Let's see if it knows what IAAS is. Uh, IAS is a compute uh, a uh, computing infrastructure provision to manage over internet. OK, that's cool. Uh, what uh, is a resource? group okay what is a resource group let's see boom a container and a resource group it tells us this and what we like about this this allows us to actually see some like and use um something that that can help us get re quick responses one of the coolest things about this is if you have like an hr a really big company in hr right you want to kind of take a look at that um uh you know instead of instead of having the hr answer questions you take the knowledge base build a knowledge base the Cortez knowledge base is over 7,000 questions and answers, and then we put trees on them, right, uh, on these different things. Would you like to know more? Would you like to know more? And really has turned out to be something else. So I really wanted to kind of show that uh, in there. All right, so I'm going to turn it back over. I want to say thank you so much. I know this was a whirlwind of information. This has been recorded, okay? And um, we're going to give, uh, this has been recorded. We'll reach out to you. But Dave, I'm going to pass it back to you, brother, uh, and say thanks everyone for coming today. Dave? Sherman, wow, this was awesome. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is incredible, um, to say the least. But uh, like Sherman said, we thank you guys for attending this. Um, it was a pleasure hosting this for you guys. I hope everybody had the got a lot of out of, out of this uh, this session, and we would be more than happy to help. Uh, help you guys in your next initiative, take advantage of the, the free money that Microsoft is uh, allocating for these initiatives around the Power Platform. Please just reach out. Um, I know that we're, we have uh, a follow-up email going out, respond to us. Let us know, hey, I would be interested in into talking to somebody. We would be more than happy to, to walk you guys through that. But like Sherman said, there's about 20, up to about $20,000 of resources or funds available for that Microsoft has, a, um, has uh, available. So let's take advantage of that together. So again, thank you for uh, attending this. And um, Sherman, again, thank you for uh, hosting this. It was incredible. Great and, and, and awesome. And yeah, so for those who said yes, um, Dave's going to send out a calendar invite for next week or later this week. If that time doesn't work, uh, and it's just more of a discovery. Look, it, nothing's. This isn't one of those situations where like, hey, hey, look at what I got. What watch do I got to sell? Buy, buy, buy. We are the least, the least, uh, you know, uh, aggressive folks out there. Just uh, we'll send you an invite. If that time doesn't work, just select suggest another one. Usually about a half hour, forty five minutes. We'll just talk. 
That's all we got to do first. Let's just figure out. You got to you know build relationships first, then you do business together. So uh, everyone, thanks again. Thanks again for your time. Really appreciate it, Dave. Thank you for allowing us to help out with this. And um, look forward to seeing some other invites for other sessions that we have for you. We have uh, uh, Teams. There's one for Azure. Uh, there's uh, Azure Virtual Desktop is coming up. Love to talk to you. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.